All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Lee. Fantastic. So, very few people know this fact outside of Princeton. F. Scott Fitzgerald, the literary giant, the chronicler of the jazz age, the notorious bad boy of letters, wrote a musical. And then he wrote two more. You'd have missed them if you didn't happen to be a freshman at Princeton University in 1913. That's when Fitzgerald arrived, determined to become the next big man on campus, the next leader among men. He came with two goals, to make the football team, which he did not, and to infiltrate the illustrious Triangle Club. Now, the Triangle Club was then, as it is now, the grandest possible adventure for a young dreamer. Every year, the students wrote and presented an original musical comedy, then took it on the road to wreak havoc on the provinces. It was a perfect outlet for a self-described romantic egotist, perfect and all-consuming, as it turns out. So poor with, was, were Fitzgerald's grades that he was forbidden from touring forbidden from holding office, and forbidden from even performing in his own shows. So poor was he at his grades that he eventually withdrew from the university, but not before providing the lyrics for three complete scores. That's a staggering 57 musical numbers. Now this year, the Triangle Club celebrates its 125th anniversary, making it the nation's oldest touring collegiate musical comedy troupe. As a quasquicentennial gift to ourselves and to Scott and Zelda, wherever they may be, we take you to an alternate reality. To hear a few of those 57 songs, not as they sounded originally, but as they might have sounded in Fitzgerald's heyday. Uh, the first song, Charlotte Corday, is from his final effort, the 1916 Safety First, with music by F. Warburton Gilbert, and will be sung by Miss Caroline Hertz and Mr. Chris Beard. The second, My Idea of Love, is from 1915's The Evil Eye, with music by Harry L. Gordon Jr. and Rex Brashier, and will be sung by Miss Sarah Ann Sillers. All are recent Triangle graduates, including the former Triangle conductor and orchestrator Emily Whitaker, who joins the band on piano and Celeste. So Charlotte Corday and My Idea of Love. And 
so he got it in the neck. Oh, Charlotte Cortez, Charlotte Cortez, you had them all on a string. Gee, they were mean to guillotine a sweet little innocent thing. Got the hat when you wanted it, tried it on, but it didn't fit. So ambition and disappointment, these two were themes that would recur in Fitzgerald's work and sadly in his personal life. Um, and a lot of that can be traced to the fact that he withdrew from Princeton. Um, but despite that fact, he would remain nostalgic and very, very, very loyal to his alma mater for the rest of his life. Um, five years before he passed away, in January of 1935, he wrote a letter to one of the current students, a composer lyricist named Brooks Bowman of the class of 1936 about a song that Bowman had written for Triangle's most recent show, Stags at Bay, which was called East of the Sun, which many of you might know. Um, he wrote asking perhaps uh, the song could be adapted into a school song with a few changes. And, um, and Brooks Bowman apparently did not change you know, any of it, which was great because the song ended up um, in August of that year uh, hitting number one on the Lucky Strike hit parade and became the only bona fide uh, hit um, in the club's history, national hit. 
Now, tragically, the enormously gifted Bowman's life was cut short in 1937, four days short of his 24th birthday in an automobile accident. But the song has gone on to become a standard, having been performed by Hal Kemp, Arthur Tracy, Sarah Vaughan, Benny Goodman, Tommy Dorsey, and Frank Sinatra, Stan Getz, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Tony Bennett, Diana Krall, and of course now by Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks. those guys with those megaphones. Soon everybody will want them. The Sun and West of the Moon by Brooks Bowman, Stags at Bay, Planet Megaphones, Gordon Jenkins arrangement. How about Emily Whitaker sitting in on the piano? All right. Nice to have a lady in the band, too. All right. 
Oh, what a night. Okay. Now, our final two Fitzgerald selections for the evening, again, they're arranged not in the original style, but reimagined for the era uh, where Fitzgerald was at the pinnacle of his success, are from his first show, for which he provided both the book and the lyrics, 1914's Fi Fi Fifi, which, believe it or not, predates the 1925 No No Nanette. <laughs> I think it's sort of funny that the fictional show in this side of paradise is called uh, Ha Ha Hortense. Uh, the show, which features music by A.L. Booth, class of 1915, is light, it's entertaining fair, and it trades heavily on Oscar Wilde-isms, uh, but it features a real musical comedy rarity in the ending, uh, which is actually quite um, bittersweet for the heroine, the manicurist. It's a fascinating suggestion of where Fitzgerald would go with his future work. So once again, please welcome our recent uh, Triangle graduates, Emily Whitaker, who will be at the piano, and Celeste, accompanying Caroline Hertz and Sarah Ann Sillers, who will share the first song, uh, The Heroine's Lament, called Men, followed by Chris Beard singing the male ingenue's farewell to his sweetheart just when things look their worst, a song called Goodnight and Goodbye. And after that, good night and goodbye. <laughs> Yes. 
in ward of light, I laughed for a night to the sky. But my love's gone, sped with the dawn, so I bid you good night and good bye. Thank you so much. Good night and goodbye. How about these wonderful performers? Congratulations. Oh, my goodness. How about that? This wonderful celebration of F. Scott Fitzgerald's music. Yeah, at Princeton 100 years ago. We're so happy to uh, be part of this. <laughs>